Hello everybody and welcome to episode number 15 of An Irish Knitting Podcast. Hi everybody, I'm Sam, I'm an artist and illustrator and of course an aspiring knitting designer based in the Republic of Ireland. You can find me around the internet, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, my website, uh, a robbery page, um, what else, uh, an Etsy shop, looking for Irish farm art. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for coming by. Uh, this is my knitting podcast or talk show or blog in which I talk about my Finnish works and this week we have plenty of Finnish works not massive, some big projects, some small projects uh, a rework of uh, old knits we will talk about works in progress and uh, of course uh, eventually acquisitions if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, that's been a big jump on subscribers uh, from my last video and uh, really that filled my heart so much. I'm so, so grateful. And I would like to thank all the other podcasters and uh, knitters that uh, kind of mentioned me in their channels, in their venues. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really great to be able to build a little bit this uh, community. And we are quite close to the 2,000 subscribers, so I'm already thinking of uh, a putting together a giveaway, but uh, that will come, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. So I really hope you have your coffee, your tea, your needs, your needlepoint, your crochet work, uh, sit down, relax and uh, enjoy your flight as they say, but let's talk about Finnish works. So I mentioned I have quite a bit of Finnish projects for this week, uh, this because I found myself uh, basically knitting all the time, through meetings in work. I'm very lucky that I can work from home, so whenever I have to attend a meeting or a training, I can turn off the camera and knit on the background while, of course, trying to take a note and be proactive in the meeting as well. Uh, but that, this led me with uh, casting off a lot of stuff which is absolutely great and uh, if you are a knitter or a crafter you know the feeling and uh, yeah it's a very big boost of your confidence and uh, yeah you love it so the first one that i would like to talk to you is what i'm wearing now of course you've seen this in my preview podcast as well this is the pelle sweater by sunness garn is a um, for sale pattern by the Norwegian yarn company Sunness and um, yeah I just love it so much it's included in their 2015 men collection it's a bottom up sweater so you need from the waist up to the yoke uh, with uh, raglan decreases as well for this sweater, I use the combination of cones of super soft wool from uh, Holst Garn and uh, Woolly Knits. I'm going to put all the details here, but if you are very curious about uh, gauge and needle size and uh, everything and anything that is uh, that has happened with this jumper, please check out my rubbery page and the links are below in the description. So I showed this on my last podcast as it was a finished work and for all purposes it was finished. I wasn't quite happy with the neckband. I go back to my previous uh, podcast, uh, the number 14 if I'm right. I showed you the neckband and I was saying that I was really happy with a very big and slouchy neckband here. 
And I was. I really liked the style very, very much. But someone in the comments, and thank you so much for your comment, you know who you are. I'm not mentioning here because I didn't ask you, but someone in the comments was pointing out that the big collar, the big slouchy collar would probably in time loosen up and get very, very large due to the qualities of the super soft wool and due to the fact that uh, it's just a one by one ribbing. So I already had in mind the fact that the collar was very big and I already had in mind that uh, I wasn't 100% there with the collar. So I embraced myself and uh, I unraveled the collar and the first few short rows here. What I've done then is to pick up all the stitches and start knitting in the round and adding about three more short rows. The very last round I decided to decrease a number of stitches as well so that the collar would be much tighter. And then, of course, I started with one by one ribbing, going up to the collar and binding off. Usually, or usually, before, formally, I bound off using an Italian cast off, which is a sort of a tubular, very, very stretchy cast off, and it's really pretty. But to give this yarn and this jumper a little bit of structure, I decided to go on with a regular bind off which is actually very helpful to give the color more, of course, the structure and to keep it in place a little bit better. So, when I finished this, it was a massive piece of work because, of course, the quality of the yarn, the yarn is really, really sticky, really difficult to work, and as well the fact that it's a very light fingering weight yarn and uh, we use a combination of 2.75 and 2.5 needles so really really fiddly and small took a lot of time but the final result is great I am going to wear this jumper so much more than the iteration I had before and I'm sure it's gonna last so much better in time after washing after wearing it for a lot of time the color is not going to stretch out massively and is just so so beautiful so once again this is the Pelle sweater or Pelle Ganser by Sunless Garn and uh, you can find the pattern in my description below Let's go on with the second work and we again talk about sweater. Now, really sorry I couldn't wear this, but here it is and is soaking wet. I am going to try and put some footage of this sweater and you can see this sweater in all its glory and probably I'll be able to wear it as well. It's soaking wet because I have cast it off a couple of days ago and uh, tried to block it and it's still wet. I had to put it back <laughs> because I, it really was dripping in my hands. Anyway, as you guess it, this is my anchor sweater, which is a pattern for sale uh, by Petit Knits. That was a work in progress in my last vlog and uh, I just started it last time and now it's finished, which means it took just two weeks which is absolutely great, never happened before with a jumper to be so quick. Anyway, it's uh, my French Riviera summer edition of the Anker sweater. I have knitted before an Anker sweater using some Drops Alpaca yarn, which is a great voluminous, big, soft and super warm jumper if it's quite well and I just love the pattern, it's so easy to follow, so mindless and you just knit and purl in the round, it's great, flies off the needles. 
I really like that pattern because it really gives a little bit of structure to my upper body, my chest and uh, my waist. It just looks very, very good on me. So I wanted another one, but considering that it's uh, about to be summer, although I'm looking out the window today, it doesn't look like summer or even spring at all. So I wanted something uh, quite uh, light and summery and uh, not that warm, to be honest. So I picked this yarn here, which is a cotton light yarn by Drops. This is a 50 gram ball, 1.76 ounces by 105 meters or 115 yards. It's a combination of uh, cotton, 50%, and uh, polyamide or polyester, sorry, and the other 50%. So it's quite a light yarn. I wouldn't probably choose this type of yarn going back because of the high content of polyamide. I'm always conscious about the environment and I'm only conscious about the fact that I don't want with my crafts to bring more plastic to the environment. But the original idea was to get a pure cotton yarn. I really couldn't find anything um, in Ireland. So this was available in one of my local yarn shop. It's um, extraordinarily cheap. I think I paid 1 euro 30 per ball. And uh, that jumper took only 10 balls, which are 5 balls of the blue color, which is denim blue and five balls of the this whitish acro color and so all in all the jumper cost something like 15 euro altogether if i take into consideration i don't know needles and uh, waist yarn and uh, stitch markers literally nothing not even in pennies or primark i think you call it abroad you can find something like this it's so, so, so cheap. And the yarn, of course. At the end of the day, it worked great. I think uh, that amount of polyester in the yarn gave it some squishiness. It wasn't really tough to knit with. When I was researching cotton yarns, I could see a lot of posts, post both on Ravelry, here on YouTube and uh, general vlogs, saying that uh, knitting with cotton is quite difficult, it's quite hard on your hands and um, not really an enjoyable experience. But this yarn having an amount of uh, polyester makes the work a little bit easier. It's not as uh, knitting with uh, wool, knitting with soft wool, knitting with cashmere or merino. It's a little bit rougher. But the thing that you get out of this is an amazing stitch definition and, of course, the work flies through the needle. There's no resistance at all. At the end of the day, I really love the jumper. I try it on quickly before blocking and it fits amazing. I have made some modification to the pattern though. The first modification is, of course, adding short rows. And I got this tip by Jonathan Days from the Jonathan Days podcast here on YouTube. He knitted a number of uh, anchor sweater himself and um, it was mentioned in that he added short rows. The short row situation is taken from the flux sweater letter by letter, literally, or stitch by stitch, I would say. So you get to the flax sweater pattern, which is a free pattern here on Ravelry, here, there on Ravelry, and uh, you track down the number of stitches after you complete your yoke, and uh, you just follow that pattern for the short rows. When you're finished with the short rows, I divided uh, for the sleeves, and I started knitting the body. Every change of color is uh, 13 rows of stitches, apart from the short rows part, which is just a bigger um, type of band of color. 
And this gives you, adding just a few short rows, gives you a little bit of a structure on the next side and defines what the front and the back of your jumper, which is just really, really good for the fit of the jumper. I suppose the original anchor sweater is quite boxy, so the short row uh, modification will give it a little bit more of a wearability. The second modification comes again from another podcaster, which is uh, Caleb from Drowning in Yarn. He tapered his anchor sweater on the body side going down towards your waist. Tapering means creating a sort of a cone shape which is great when you want to give your body a little bit of shape through your garment. I don't have a gym body or I'm not fit by any sort of mean so this really helps uh, the jumper to look better on me. Um, I taper down only four stitches each side. So I basically kept a stitch marker um, in correspondence to the underarm and then towards the end I just um, decreased four stitches on each side. And that gives just that little bit of cone shape towards the waist, making the waist more fitted, which is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous and I will keep doing that for every single sweater I make. So thank you so much Jonathan and Caleb for this recommendation. The next um, modification I made is on the waistband. Originally I casted off the waistband with uh, my last 13 stitches of the white color and it was alright, it was kind of the right length but uh, casting off uh, using a tubular cast off once again made the cotton to flare a lot on my waist which wasn't really good at all and um, it didn't keep the structure on the jumper and everything was falling apart basically. So after I finished the entire work, I tried on, I wasn't happy with the waist. I unraveled the Italian cast off and I added a further 13 stitches, which is another change of color basically, on the waist, keeping the one by one ribbing, and then I cast it off using just a regular cast off. And that kept the ribbing on the waist so much neater. It's of course twice the length, it's very long, but it does the job. It looks amazing, it's very well fitting on the waist, and doesn't flare at all. Anyway, that is my anchor sweater and I call it the French Riviera Summer Edition just because I am probably going to wear it in, uh, on my holidays in south of France next summer. It's a pattern from Petit Neat, it's for sale on Ravelry and I'm going to put the link below in the description. And the yarn again that I use is this Cotton Light by Drops which is 50% uh, cotton and 50% polyester. It's an extraordinarily cheap, it's a DK weight yarn. And as needle goes, I use a combination of uh, 3.5 millimeters and uh, 2.75 millimeters for the ribbing. It's uh, a lower size of needle than what's recommended, but for some sort of reasons that gave me the right gauge. And as size go, I knitted a smaller size that was in the pattern. I found that I do like quite fitted jumpers and the garments generally, so I know that Petite Knit has a little bit of uh, positive ease always in their design, so I kind of lower down my scale on size, which is as well a great boost of confidence, of course. I'm extraordinarily happy with that jumper. And uh, yeah, I really hope I am not casting on another anchor sweater, otherwise my wardrobe will be full of anchor sweaters. But definitely I recommend this pattern with those two or three modifications. If you are 
considering a present to knit for someone else's. This is a great, great uh, sweater, doesn't take a lot of time and doesn't take a lot of yarn as well. So, let's talk about my third Finnish work. Ta -ta -ta. Here it is. This is a teddy bear. It's a pattern for sale on Ravelry by Julie Williams. Let me sit him here. If he stays, I don't think he will. So I will say it's a pattern for sale on Ravelry by Julie Williams. Um, it's um, for all purposes just a teddy bear wearing a fair high jumper and a pair of shorts. I am not big in knitting toys or amigurumi or anything like that, to be honest. But I was following Julie on Instagram and I couldn't stop but really liking every single one of her pictures. They are just amazing and I just love them all. And uh, yeah, I decided to purchase the button and start working on this. This surprisingly took one day only. I don't know if I was uh, getting obsessed with knitting through this or if the pattern is just so well written that it takes nothing to knit up. It's uh, not perfect. I think my next one will be so much better as uh, basically all the pieces are knitted in a combination of flat knitting and knitting it around. I'm not really great at flat and knitting flat. Uh, the purling size drives me insane. So yeah, it was a little bit of a challenge in that way, but the way it comes together after you cast off your pieces is just mind blowing. It's so, so pretty. For this teddy bear, I uh, used just one skein of uh, Drops Charisma, which is a 100% wool decay yarn in the color dark brown. I basically needed the entire teddy bear out of one skein, and the skein was around 3 euros. So, again, very affordable and uh, quite good quality yarn. Although, I need to be for jumpers with uh, Drops Charisma and I find them quite difficult to wear. It's really, really scratchy. For the jumper and uh, the little shorts, I have used a few tails, combination of scraps of uh, Drops Fable, as well as Adriafil Calza Socks and Regia uh, Sock Yarn for ply. So you would use a DK for the body, of the teddy bear and then a sock yarn for the, um, the garments. The pattern is so well written that even the color work on the jumper is um, color coded in the text of the pattern. It's just something I've never seen before, which is really, really good. What else to say? Yeah, I can't wait to knit up uh, Another one of these, they are so cute, gorgeous, and the way it's shaped is really effective, I would say. Julie puts on her rubbery shop, or probably she has a website as well. I'm gonna do some research, but you will find all the links below. She puts a lot of uh, clothing for these toys, uh, the, the teddy bears, the rabbits, uh, the other animals, the dolls that she has. So eventually, after you purchase the pattern, and you have, of course, in the original pattern, a couple of a combination of uh, jumpers and the trousers, you can eventually buy other patterns uh, just for garments. So you can turn this into a lady, if you wish, knitting a lovely dress or you will have different type of jumpers and uh, yeah, it's, it's just uh, a gold mine full of uh, possibilities and I really love that. So here we go and my little boy teddy bear. It's so cute and so detailed that even the back side of the jumper has a little button to fasten it up and being able to take it off if you want is just just great and it's so easy to follow so I warmly warmly 
recommend this. I'm actually shaking this, but I shouldn't probably. He said it's gonna come off eventually. My next finished work is a pair of socks. And this is as well a pattern release because these are my new socks for the Venetian collection of socks. I think I have around six patterns in that collection. So this is a collection that has been inspired by the buildings that are facing the Canal Grande, the Grand Canal in Venice. Um, Venice has this massive canal um, going through and it was basically the it is still the big motorway of the city, everything through from commerce, through tourist movement go through the canal. There are no cars in Venice, so everything goes by boat. And um, in years gone by, during the Republic time, all potent, rich, noble families used to build their houses, their palaces facing the canal just to show off or because it was very convenient as well. So I decided to try and get some inspiration from these buildings and uh, knit up some patterns, some designs that would uh, recall and be connected to those buildings. So these are called the Fondaco del Mejo and uh, how can I explain this? So, Fondaco del Mejo or Mejo, because you don't really um, say the G sound outside of uh, Venice. It's um, a building that was this time built by the state itself. The Republic um, just decided to build on the Grand Canal this big sort of a barn sort of um, stock house for grains and mayo itself the word means um, millet seed I suppose is the translation in English so some sort of um, cereal grain it's a massive building and uh, yeah it has beautiful um, diamond shaped structure on its facade facing the canal the Republic of Venice built this massive um, storehouse, this massive barn in the middle of the city. This because, of course, being a big type of state, it had a lot of um, food supplies coming into the capital, coming into Venice from abroad, from the sea from the land and they really needed a place to store all the cereals and uh, especially it happened that uh, in the 1600 the black plague uh, massively hit the republic of venice and um, they really needed something to feed the population and so they just built this massive structure which over the year was always kept as the focal point of the Venetian institutions of the Republic being giving people sustain and support and uh, even nowadays when there is a protest going on when there's something that is wrong with the government of course not the Venetian government anymore but the government in Rome that eventually took over, the protests start from there. So it's a sort of um, the Republic giving to its people. And fun fact, Venice, uh, still nowadays, the city of Venice has the title of Serenissima, which means the most serene of the cities and back in the days of the republics. This because Venice was so um, welcoming of a foreign culture was so big into commerce into meeting other cultures into melting all the cultures together that the city itself was very very welcoming from um, other people other culture other feelings other 
religions, that was really strange back a century ago, two centuries ago, five centuries ago, which um, gave it the name of um, the Serenissimo, the most serene place to live. Everybody were welcome, everybody were living in harmony. And the state itself was delivering um, sort of um, a social welfare type of situation. And with the Fondaco del Mejo or del Mayo, they really gave the possibility of everybody to have access to food at the end of the day, especially in time of the Black Plague, which was great. Anyway, apart from the history of the building itself, this socks is knitted from the top down, as per usually my socks. I very seldom knit from the bottom up. This because I do like to have an idea of the length of the cuff part of the thing before I go on with the sock. It's a, a full-on color work with uh, color work repeating both on the top and on the sole and we do have a revised afterthought heel. The toe itself is a sort of a round toe type of thing with a different number of increases and decreases uh, going on at some point of the toe. The heel is an afterthought heel kind of reworked. This because with a regular afterthought heel I don't really like all the spaces and gaps that are formed. So I put a couple of tricks here and there to get this to work so much better. And I have his brother as well. Of course, if you see, the ends are not so neat yet. But I managed to write down the pattern to send it to a couple of test knitters and it's uh, available in my rubbery shop. For this pattern I use for probably the first time Regia sock yarn. I originally knitted this with um, this type of cone of yarns here, but that wasn't really working. The fabric wasn't uh, coming together as I wished, so I had to go back into regular sock yarn. And I had a few bows of regia, light blue and uh, black actually. And I really love the fabric that regia 4-ply yarn gives. It's just so full and plump and kind of a little bit fuzzy as well. Regia, rather than other sock yarns that I tried before, has that tiny, tiny little bit of rusticness that I am really enjoying for socks. And I would definitely recommend it. So here you go again, my next iteration, my next entry for the Venetian collection. This is the major socks and you find it in my rubbery page. This part will never end. <laughs> and I have another finished work. This is the magic or mystery star ball from Arne and Carlos is just a nice simple color work design of sort of a traditional Salbu star type of thing is not Salbu star well a Norwegian design this is a Christmas ball from the 55 Christmas balls to knit by Arne and Carlos and if you know I'm trying to knit them up all of them and uh, yeah this is number 11 it's uh, quite a nice little design I think I needed this up in half an hour or so I am using a combination of burgundy and white from Fable which is 75 25 drops sock yarn it's inexpensive it's great nothing to take from the yarn, I used to use the yarn all the time for socks. Now I am kind of shying away from that as I don't particularly like the fabric that it creates. But you know, for Christmas decorations it's great. And this pattern is very easy to follow as well. So yeah, if you have the book, definitely go to number 11 and cast it on. As you notice, it's still deflated. I haven't uh, stuffed it yet. As um, 
I am putting them aside as I need them, as I need these balls, and I will stuff them in one go just before Christmas. So I can get a little bit of consistency into the amount of stuffing and as well the way that I sew up the ends and all the little uh, bits and bobs. Let's keep talking about Christmas decorations. As you know, I am trying to come up with uh, my own Christmas uh, bubbles, Christmas bowls, and the idea is um, at the end of the day to have 24 Christmas bowls and um, eventually if I can find uh, a good partnership with a yarn company or perhaps uh, some publisher this is a big dream of mine I know that won't happen probably but I really wish I could work uh, with someone or someone could eventually help me to get this done and create a sort of um, box set, um, a sort of a Christmas advent calendar type of thing, including the patterns and uh, the yarn to make them. So I came up with the design a few months ago now. I have been browsing patterns online on Ravelry and other websites for Christmas decorations and I couldn't really find anyone that knitted them in the round using the magic loop technique. So I put myself down through my yarn and needles and I came up with this pattern here which is completely knitted in the round it is extraordinarily easy to photo and uh, it's really effective because it gives a perfect sphere. Um, these are again completely wet. If I squeeze I'm sure water will come out because I just finished them and I blocked them. So I got three new designs going on. This one is just a snowflake type of uh, star situation. It, they are all knitted up using Drops Charisma by the way, which is a very inexpensive 100% wool decay yarn and stuffed with old pillow stuffing. Pillows that I haven't used and instead of throwing them away I just use the stuffing for this type of thing and even my teddy bear was stuffed with that, so very good for a recycling. So yeah, this is the first one, uh, hopefully it will block out, it's, uh, they are all knitted in color work, so you basically knit in the round using the magic loop technique, I'm not going to spoil the pattern yet, and uh, the pattern repeats on both sides, of course. The second one, it's um, another type of uh, star-ish it would uh, originally remind a flower but <laughs> you know as it goes I was penciling down the pattern and I came up with this thing that was really pretty and I thought okay I'm going to keep this. They do not have names yet but the names will probably come eventually at the end of this adventure. And then finally we have this little by color type of thing with the two hearts. A, the hearts are basically inverting the colors in the pattern and there is a little motif going on in the middle. This is one of my favorite. I really find that I do like these blocks of colors going on in my Christmas decoration. I think they are very very effective. So here you go three more Christmas bowls to add to my hopefully to come advent uh, calendar. By the way, if you know of uh, any yarn company, dyer, uh, any publisher that will be interested in working with me on this adventure, please, please, please let me know or let them know. That will be even more helpful this because from my side I don't really know how to tackle it and of course I don't have the 
monetary resources to produce this thing. The worst case scenario is that I will publish them on Ravelry and that's it. But I really want to give a little bit more because, yeah, it's uh, something that's quite dear to my heart and I want to be dear to yours as well and you be able to open the box and have a little surprise every day for Advent and of course those balls take 20 minutes to knit, nothing really and I'm not even joking. Once you get the idea the, where the increases and decreases goes, they fly through the needles, super super easy. Well, finally we are at the last finish work, which is a bow tie. I haven't designed a bow tie, a new bow tie, in so long that uh, I'm even ashamed of myself. So a few months ago I came up with this lovely bow tie design, which is a really classic, effective bow tie, all knitted up in the round, once again using a magic loop. I was looking originally for a nice bow tie to knit up for a dinner, if I remember, something like that. I was uh, wearing a suit and uh, I really wanted a touch of my own craft. And I couldn't find anything that wasn't gimmicky or cartoonish, that wasn't um, just really flashy or pretty enough. So, once again, when you can't find something, I went uh, to my desk and I started penciling down this. And after a few trials, I got a nice, perfect, really, really classic-looking bow tie that you can wear formally with this little band here and you can attach to the back, there is a little button there and it just looks like a proper bow tie. But if you take off the band, of course, this can become an applique for a dress or a headpiece or something. Anyway, this is called Farige, which is an Irish word for sea. I'm sorry, Irish people, if I'm mispronouncing this, but I am really, really trying the best that I can. Farge, uh, because, of course, I was inspired by my anger sweater, by the summer vibe, and uh, I created this little color work with uh, the waves going up and down, which is quite good, uh, quite nice and interesting. And, uh, yeah, nothing else to say about that. Farige is the Irish word for sea, as I mentioned. The yarn that I used here is regia once again. Um, it's the same regia yarn that I use for my socks. It's a combination of black and light blue. Four ply sock yarn, 75-25, nothing crazy. And uh, needles that are recommended are 2.5 millimeters a circular needles. You will find this pattern for sale in my rubbery shop. Talking about bow ties, a few uh, weeks ago, probably months now, I published a pattern for a bow tie for Ukraine. This um, was my way somehow to support uh, the Ukrainian crisis and the refugee crisis especially the refugees coming here to Ireland. And I knitted that pattern. If I have a picture, I might pop it here using the Ukrainian colors and the big um, heart in the pattern using the same colors. I was um, selling, and I'm still actually, selling that pattern um, with all the money coming from the pattern going to UNICEF Ireland in support to this awful humanitarian crisis. And uh, last week I was able to donate 175 euros coming through the pattern. I'm really, really happy and humbled that so many people decided to take part to this little donation situation, uh, purchase the pattern, and a couple of views have actually knitted it, so through Instagram and um, Ravelry I could see lovely, lovely projects uh, coming up. I am still keeping that open for 
raising donations for UNICEF Ireland in support to Ukraine. This because uh, the situation is not improving very much and um, we still need all the support that uh, we can have. So please, if you are interested in supporting UNICEF and uh, us through the channel, go into my Ravelry page and I'll put the link as, again below in the description and this pattern is called a Papillon for Ukraine. It's super easy, you get the pattern. If you don't like the Ukrainian color, you can knit up your own colors, you can even knit up them in a block. Only the pattern is the same, I just changed the color work on the pattern. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's just a nice, nice little bow tie here. I starch this up a little bit using um, rice starch, but you can definitely use a little bit of hairspray if you want to give it a little bit of structure or knitting with a wire on the very edges. That would as well help. This is an idea that just came actually. I might add that to the pattern. Great idea. So we are done with the finished works uh, finally. Am I talking too much? Is this getting too long? Let me know. I'll be interested in understanding if you people feel like my blogs, my podcasts are too long. Anyway, I had to make myself a coffee and this is 100% Italian coffee from Ireland. So let's talk about uh, works in progress and uh, you have seen I think all of them in my previous podcast as well so there's nothing really new but I would like to give you some updates. So the first that I have is this kind of sweater here. I have started this sweater a few months ago I haven't really worked on this much. Something came about my anchor sweater came through and other projects, so I got kind of sidetracked. I have started this uh, with my most favorite or well-fitting number of stitching um, of stitches from the bottom of the jumper. I know that if I cast on 240 stitches using 2.75 mm needles, Using fingering weight yarn, I get a sweater that fits me quite well. This is, for example, the size uh, of the number of stitches that I use for the pellet sweater that I'm wearing. So I started this a few months ago using these cones of yarn. This is Prussian Blue from JC Rennie and this is um, Flannel Grey from Host Garn, which are two fingering weight, very, very light fingering weight, um, super soft wool. And uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to get rid of some of my wool, knit something new, and I wasn't really sure if this was torn into a sadness pattern, for example, a Mario sweater or something like that, or a new design. It comes out that uh, this week I started creating my own color work for the yoke. And uh, yeah, so this will turn into an original uh, design, an original pattern. I am hopefully going to finish the first side of the color work here divide for the sleeve and I will probably work a raglan type of decreases like kind of this sweater here but um, yeah I am looking for some clever ways to incorporate the color work. Usually when you need up color work the raglan decreases or increases depending which way you go they are knitted in the main color only I like that, but I don't like that. I feel like um, we should have some sort of continuity in the color work, even in the raglan situation. So I'm still um, in the design mode of the sweater and uh, yeah, but so far it's coming through very well. It's just a very graphic type of design. Hopefully I will have some more 
uh, to share and to show in my next podcast is still the very beginning. But yeah, so far I'm happy with this and I'm happy that this work is not being frogged but is turning into something I may like, I may not like, we'll see. And uh, for sure it will be something new that I haven't uh, so far seen on Ravelry. My next uh, work in progress is another sort of original um, jumper design. It's a little bit bundled up into these very short cables. Uh, let me see if I can stretch a side without losing my stitches. But here you go. So the story of this jumper, or this color work design, comes from my holidays back home, visiting my family. I was there and my sister was wearing this beautiful color work jumper that eventually I found out that my mom knitted in her teens um, and she gave it to my sister to wear and it's just so beautiful and kind of uh, vintage looking and the fact that my mom came up with uh, the color work herself made it even more special. So with that idea I wanted to knit up more or less the same pattern or at least keep the same color work and fit it into my style or a more modern type of knitting. And uh, <clears throat> so far I managed to track down or to write down the color work going into the pictures I've taken, zooming in and just uh, coloring a piece of graph paper with uh, the colors. And um, yeah, I have started with a uh, neck band, which is a 2x2 two two ribbing folded in, um, increasing right after the neck band a number of stitches, and then starting the raglan increases as well, going down through the sleeves. And I am at the point of uh, working a couple of more rows of these increases, and then um, dividing for the sleeves. For this jumper I use that uh, cotton light yarn from Sunness. This because um, it was more or less the original yarn that my mom used back in the days. It, um, sure, she used a sort of uh, cotton wool mix uh, with some acrylic as well. Nothing fancy knowing my mom, she was quite frugal, so yeah, I kind of stuck with the recommendation there. Originally, the design that my mother chose was a drop sleeve uh, type of jumper with sticks for the sleeves, which would have made my life so, so much easier in terms of uh, pattern repetition and so on and so forth. But being myself really crazy, I decided to um, make it into a raglan because I feel like a raglan kind of suit better myself. This means that it's a nightmare for me to fit the pattern within the stitch count. But I'm really pleased with the initial result, of course. It's bundled up and it's really crazy. I haven't worked much on this yet, uh, but I am sure now that my anchor sweater is done, I will have so much more time to knit this. Can't wait to divide for the sleeve and uh, see a little bit of shape coming through, at least I can put it on. As you have noticed, I am choosing a top-down sweater or top-down construction. It's kind of a new territory for me. I usually tend to knit my sweater from the bottom up. This because probably I started knitting using Sunness pattern or Arna and Carlos pattern, patterns and I all want uh, or recommend more top up patterns or constructions which are great. I'm looking there because there's a massive magpie peering into my pots. I don't know what she is doing there. She's just eating probably bugs or stuff. Anyway, 
never happened before <laughs> that I've noticed a bank by bugging around my little garden. Anyway, something that I use to create and understand the construction of uh, both this sweater and uh, the other one that I am knitting with super soft wool is this book here. This is Knitting Pattern Essentials by Sally Melville and this is published by Pottercraft. I got this book in my personal library for so long and I have always been so intimidated about this book. It's very technical but it gives you all the essential information about um, knitting up your own patterns or creating your own designs and I found this great for um, understanding stitch count, the creases, increases, so where to put the shaping especially for my mother's uh, sweater that was really interesting to understand how to count the stitch numbers from the neckband down to the yoke and then eventually the sleeves, the bite and so on and so forth. So for the first time ever I started using this book. It's great, it's a very 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 good tool if you are dibbling into knitting your own jumpers or if you want to understand the technicality behind knitting uh, garments. It's just great, gives you all the construction idea and as well some stitch patterns type of thing to define better your work, some uh, nice idea for lace as well as color work. So yeah, I would really recommend this book. It's not for very very beginner though. I bought this as a beginner thinking about uh, how good it would be to be able to build your own jumpers but it stayed there in my library for a long time because I just didn't have the skills uh, to understand this book. But going through my knitting career in brackets I actually found this very helpful. So that was my second work in progress and we are almost at the end and we got my third work in progress which is just a bundle of massive things here with a hook. This is my first um, crochet work. I have done crochet before, I have knitted a couple of uh, kind of lace, doily type of thing, nothing that really inspired me too much to need to, to crochet. I find it quite boring and uh, somehow difficult to understand and the language of the patterns as well is crazy. I started with uh, learning to crochet with Italian patterns which are completely different from English patterns which are completely different from American patterns which is mind-boggling to me. And this is basically a, or this is going to turn into a big massive blanket. I am using the raised waffle pattern. It's a free pattern of rubbery and I'm going to put the link below in the description. It's basically the way to create this uh, waffle type of uh, texture on your fabric and it's working up really great. I have um, originally the idea of using this yarn here which is uh, Donegal, Studio Donegal DK yarn. It's just a very common wool especially here in Ireland. I bought this wool to knit up an anchor sweater of course but uh, it was impossible to knit. It's so so rough that it was really harsh on my hands and I couldn't keep gauge at all. So this yarn was bogging the life out of me in my stash and uh, eventually I decided to start this blanket here, this trow. To knit this I kind of understood what was the 
pattern, how it works, I swatched it a little bit and then yeah, I just went on my bed and I knitted a long chain that was exactly the size of the bed or the size of the throw I wanted on my bed and then I started the pattern going backward and forward and backward and forward. It is so so long, it's about two meters and something long and every single row is so slow to crochet up uh, but yeah I'm not planning to finish this anytime soon and I'm already noticing that it takes up a lot of yarn so I will probably need to get more skeins to at least have a nice length, no length, um, height of the throw itself. But uh, yeah, this is a very long time project. I have no concerns about not having enough yarn. This is very common. It's not super expensive. It's not super cheap at the same time. But I'm really happy with the uh, weight of the fabric and uh, the way that it actually comes together. So I don't mind spending a little bit of money on this as well. But uh, yeah, here you go, another work in progress that hopefully is going to be finished at some stage before the winter comes. We have touched base on everything that I have done, that I have on my needles. I was saying that I don't have any acquisitions. This because I really felt shame about the amount of yarn that I had in my stash. I wasn't uh, considering that, um, I wasn't really aware that I had so much yarn. So basically last week I published a video going through my full yarn uh, stash. I took them out from a big trunk, a big wooden trunk that I have where I store my yarn. And uh, together we went through all the yarns there. It turns out that I have massive amount of uh, jumper quantities, about, I don't know, five or six jumpers worth of yarn. And uh, yeah, I felt shame and uh, I felt like I shouldn't really go and buy yarn on a weekly basis. So now we are in a, bit of, in a little bit of a diet <laughs> for yarn purchases. Although I am already browsing yarn websites and uh, you've seen that cone of uh, flannel grey from Holst Garn, which is three quarter to, it's not finished yet and I will probably have another jumper quantity out of the remaining yarn, but I found myself going into Holst websites and look for that specific yarn because I feel like I'm knitting up so many things out of that uh, flannel color, that little grey color, this grey color, which um, makes me quite scared of finishing it up and not having it all. Although every time I start knitting with that, I despise the way it knits up. It's so tough, so sticky and it takes so much time, but the finished work and uh, the efforts is actually paying for. So, yeah, I'm thinking to get a couple of um, cones from Holst, perhaps with the next page, I will see. Something else I want to mention, if you're still with me, is a couple of uh, discoveries on the YouTube world. I feel like we do need uh, to support each other a little bit, so let me share with you who I found on YouTube and I'm absolutely obsessed with. Well, the first person is a fellow Italian knitter. She is called Francesca. She is known, well known actually, as an Italian knitter on Instagram or an Italian knitting podcast on YouTube here. She knits the most beautiful sweaters ever that I could ever even imagine to knit. Uh, she is of course based in Italy, she podcasts in English with an amazing American accent and she knits up uh, classic uh, 
sweaters, classic pattern that you can find on Ravelry, using beautiful subtle colors, very earthy colors, which are just great and um, yeah, it's a very very inspiring. So if you want to have an idea of what's going on in Italy as knitting goes, if you want to just relax for an hour or two. She has plenty of podcasts in her channel, so go check her out. Very great. You wouldn't, uh, wouldn't really regret it. And the next one is another podcaster from uh, Sweden this time. She is Kia Boat. I think I mentioned this before in this podcast but yeah, I'm still obsessed with it. I don't know if it's the Swedish vibe, the Nordic vibe, the fact that uh, Kia is an amazing knitter. She needs so much stuff and her color works, her designs are just mind blowing and amazing. And I want to be her when I grow up. She lives in a beautiful sort of country house uh, in Sweden with the amazing dogs. She has a lovely, lovely garden and she shows not just knitting but as well spinning, uh, embroidery and other fiber crafts and she always podcasts from a beautiful, beautiful country house or the garden house, the glass house. It's just amazing and so soothing as well. So go check Kia out as well here on YouTube or on Instagram. I am going of course to put the links below. And uh, lastly I will mention as well Ruth loves to knit on uh, YouTube here. This is a long-lasting love between myself and Ruth. Uh, she is a Northern Irish uh, podcaster living in the UK and she has an amazing podcast here on YouTube talking about uh, very particular yarns and patterns that I would never ever imagine to knit myself as they are so complicated and as well the color choices are so bright. She is absolutely in love with yellow and I am absolutely in love with yellow as well although doesn't appear much but <laughs> I really love the color and I always tend to buy yarn in that color not just yarn but like even my kettle by the way is bright yellow so yeah Root Loves to Knit is another podcast that you must check out here on YouTube or of course on Instagram lot of great inspiration going on from these podcasters and I'm so happy that the community is growing and people are getting more crafty. This really, I mentioned this before, feeds my own creativity. Seeing people that create so much and with so beautiful results really gives me so much more energy to create and to feel like I am one of the community, which is absolutely great. So the plans for this week are, well, is it still the weekend for me? You will see this video Monday, but it's still Friday. So I will probably go out for dinner and um, I will have a very Eurovision night on Saturday. I really hope uh, the Italian entry will do well as they did last year although there are plenty of songs that actually did very very well. I'm really sorry that the Irish singer, the Irish entry didn't make it to the final but uh, Brooke was her name, she was great, a very very good performance and I'm really disappointed that didn't go through. Hopefully next year Ireland will do better but so far we can we can just um, support Italy and spend our energy on Italy. Next week, which will be your week for you, I will probably keep up working on my works in progress and I'm looking around because they are basically all around my living room. And of course, I'm looking for another jumper pattern to knit up. 
I really wanna try to meet another cardigan as I feel I use cardigan so much more than jumpers. So if you have a suggestion for a nice piece of uh, cardigan that I could knit up, uh, something not too flashy, I probably wouldn't like any color work. I would go with a regular plain everyday type of cardigan. Just let me know in the comments below. I am really looking forward to start a new project because we are lacking of new works. And uh, yeah, I suppose that's it for this week and I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider to subscribe to this channel. We are so close to get 2000 subscribers and we're so close to hosting another giveaway. So can't wait for that. I wish you a very, very good Monday and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.